Hi everyone, as promised, I am going to give you an introduction on how to use an airbrush machine. Now this is very basic, but I thought that it might help if it's something that you're interested in but maybe a little intimidated by. So in order to get sort of a budget airbrush system, I looked for one that had good reviews but wasn't terribly expensive. This is from Joystar Tools. So I think if you just, if you're in the UK particularly, if you just look on Google or Amazon for that, I use smile.amazon.com so that a small portion of my proceeds go to a charity of my choice. This is an airbrush system. It is, it looks intimidating, but it's not bad. So this is the gun. This is where the makeup goes in. You put a small amount of makeup here, and then when the air is moving through, you use this button to apply pressure so that the makeup comes out through here toward your face. Back here, you have the needle. So this area, this all needs to stay clean. And that's pretty much it. That's the up and down of it. This is the part that attaches to the hose that attaches to the machine. So let's take a look at the machine now. All of this extra stuff that you're seeing are just tools. This is literally a small spanner. And let's go. All right, so this is a very small unit, but it's enough to do some basic makeup. The big ones are nice, but they're not necessary until you're doing it a lot or branching out into professional airbrush. So we've got an on-off switch. I'm not sure if we have multiple pressures or just the one. Uh, I prefer a three pressure system, but this was affordable. And then of course you have your AC adapter and your hose. Super easy. This uh, goes, clips on so that, oh sorry, clips onto here so that you can rest your gun when you're not using it. It's particularly helpful if you have makeup in there, you can rest it like that so that the makeup does not drip out of your gun. Here's the hose, super easy. Um, some hoses attach differently, particularly in professional systems. So keep an eye out for something different. But for these here, it literally just pushes right in once you get it in there. It's supposed to be tight, obviously. So it's a bit of a challenge. And that's that. Now we're going to attach it to the compressor unit. And it appears that that is the DC for the electrical and this appears to be where the air comes out. You're just gonna push it in good so that there's no leakage. But this is your basic setup. And we're going to do a quick test just to make sure it works before we put any makeup in it. Okay, so we're just gonna give this a quick test. And it works. Let's see if there are any different settings or if it's just on off. Yes, so that's the second setting. As you can tell, it is a stronger bit of air there. So there are three settings. That's convenient. An air compressor is really not as fancy as one might think, except for getting different pressures. All it is is something literally that blows air. So after you've started working with your compressor, if you're happy with the amount of pressure that it provides, the different settings, if you have more than one, then my recommendation to you is to get a better gun, not a better compressor. Start with that if you're building up piece by piece. Get a better gun, it'll be easier to clean, it'll perhaps hold more or offer you more precision than this. And then your next step after that is a more complicated compressor. The first thing that's most important is finding a shade that fits the person that you are giving airbrush makeup to. So we've got the first three here. This one's a little dark, that one's probably mine. Now the best place to swatch is somewhere like on the side of the neck or the face. It's tempting to do it on your arm because that's convenient, 
but your arms are rarely ever the same color as your face. But we're gonna start with the lightest one and I'm gonna see if I need to add some of the next or if it's a good match. When you are putting makeup in, you only need a couple drops to start out. It goes further than you think. We're gonna turn it on and we're gonna give it a shot. I think this might be a good match. Every airbrush is different and every airbrush makeup is different. So it takes some time to get used to what you're doing. I'm noticing that it is actually pretty wet which I don't know if that's the makeup or how I'm applying it because it's been months since I've done makeup, airbrush makeup. <laughs> I'm just gonna go a little further out. I was a little close in is the other thing. Airbrush makeup can be actually pretty far out because the spray is wide and that's another reason why you want to get different guns because different guns give you either a narrower or broader spray. We're gonna go with this color. It seems pretty good. I'm gonna put a few more drops in here and we're just gonna go for it. And then we're gonna go around the nose here. Oh, if you notice I'm moving in circular motions, you can go in slower circular motions, but that's the best way to have an even application. All right, now relax your face, don't smile. Don't smile. <laughs> when you, anyone, when you smile, you get little cracks and crevices. So you wanna have a relaxed face when you're applying makeup so that you aren't getting bits and bobs in your cracks and crevices. That's unfair. <laughs> Lucy has a pretty nice complexion, so it's not mandatory to have a very full coverage application. This way, please. Thank you. I've also noticed that the MAC airbrush is a little less full coverage than some others I've used, but that's not really a problem. What we can do if there are any spots, red spots, that we want to add any additional coverage to, you can put something on top. Now, be very careful mixing oils and creams with airbrush because sometimes it doesn't work. So what I like to use on top is powder. So we're gonna do that just to kind of fill in the blanks here. It wasn't fully dry and then I rubbed it. Big, bad idea but that's okay, because I fixed it. Uh, be careful, let it dry. Some things take longer than others. We're going to cap makeup. Thank you, Lucy. And uh, I'm next. First, we are going to put a little bit of extra cover up there, and then we're going to seal it, because that is the most important part of this process. Because it's still wet, I'm gonna use a wet spray concealer first, and then it'll kind of dry together. After it's dry, I'm going to use a powder concealer. It may seem a little bit over the top to use, sorry, not concealer, sealer, uh, sealant. It might seem a little over the top to use both. However, I find, especially if you're doing colors like teal, you're going to want a good seal. I am from the era of Homestuck cosplay, where we all used Snazaroo face paint, and we all Got face paint on everything. <laughs> Airbrush is the way to go, especially if you're doing fancy colors. For makeup, it is more of just what works for you. Everyday to normal or realistic makeup. Anything that works for you. Does airbrush work better for you? Use airbrush. Does uh, full coverage cream base or, or oil foundation work better for you? Use that. Nothing. Powder. That's the great and horrible thing about makeup is that everybody is different. I find that I have less acne when I use airbrush makeup, so that's why I prefer it. This is my makeup setting spray from Urban Decay. As you can see, it's gotten a lot of use. It's dirty. Uh, all nighter. This is a pressed powder by Laura Mercer. I just use the NYX pressed powder because it's cheap and it works. The NYX setting spray is also really good if you're on a budget. There it is. Done. I'm a little excessive, so I like to put on a couple. We're going to set the makeup with the powder. We already set it with the spray, but the powder will help dry it. Just a little. And you're just gonna dab it all over the face. The pressed powder, 
you want your pressed powder that you are setting things with to be matte or translucent. Remember to blend down into the neck. Now that we're done with that, we did a quick swatch test to see if this airbrush makeup interacts poorly with the cover-up, which it doesn't. So because this brand is a lot more natural, I'm going to also put a little bit of cover-up on any areas that are still not a perfect sheen, so to speak. I'm also going to do a little bit on the under eyes. So that being said, you can do all of this very quickly. I'm doing it slower one to show you, but also I'm kind of hyper fixating on all of the little details. You don't have to do that. Nobody cares. Just put on a nice layer of airbrush makeup. Contour for the love of God, because once you put on airbrush makeup, no dimensions. And then go out and have fun. Anyway. Poor really itchy face. Face it just yeah yeah there yeah pat it thank you does that help yeah don't scratch your face pat it like a weave I forgot to do the under eyes done there are two ways to do. Around the eyes, when you have airbrush, it just depends on your comfort level. Some people will do the color um, with the airbrush. Some people will do concealer or, or a different foundation. Totally fine anyway. If you're doing a specific color, what I recommend is to find or blend a eyeshadow powder that is similar to that color or the same, if possible. If you can't get the color right in there by your eyes, if you're too worried about that, just get an eyebrow get an eyeshadow, <laughs> put that in there, and then you're fine. Um, also, keep in mind that most people's eyes here are a little darker. Um, you don't really have to mimic the under eye bags uh, because nobody actually wants those. But up here, it is a little darker for most people, so you can use a slightly darker tone. You can use an eyeshadow, and that's totally fine. I put on a complimentary eyeshadow, so contour. Okay, so I have an assortment of things that we are going to use to finish off this look. As I mentioned earlier, this area of people's eyes is usually darker, so after you've put on a solid one color coat of airbrush, you have to make up for it. All of the stuff that I have with me is vaguely sparkly. <laughs> so we've recolored that area, and now we're going to contour the cheeks. The easiest way to contour is to find where your cheekbone is and follow just below it. Lucy's cheekbone is right about here. So, getting some darker color on that. And we're just gonna brush that in. I'm gonna blend it. So here's the thing. You gotta blend. Oh, you gotta blend. I'm not adamant about too many things in regards to makeup. You gotta blend, you look like really freaky if you just do this. So, I'm gonna put some definition in there and then we're gonna soften it. You can use your thumb or a brush to soften the edges a little bit. Kinda blend that in. There we go. Already looking much better, much more natural. Blend that in nice and good. And then, oh, I forgot to mention, shake these before you use them. light layer. Uh, as there are many, many different shades of person in the world, it's hard, not impossible, but hard to use someone else's makeup. So there we go. Just put a little bit of that over it and that softens it right up. The next thing I'm going to do to Lucy is I'm going to put a little color on her cheeks. I'm not going for a blush look. Um, you can go for a blush look if you want. So where we normally have color, you want a very subtle color for a natural look. You normally have a little color on your chin. So you're gonna put the color back on your chin. It's funny, you do all this, then you just try to put it back on. A little bit on the nose, so we're gonna put the color back in the nose. And now where you put it on your cheek, 
is more preference than anything. I like to put it up here because I get red there and also because I feel it looks less like I'm putting on blush. But generally your blush is going to settle right here around like the apex of your cheekbone. But I'm going to do what I do to myself for Lucy and put it up more so that it just looks like a natural little bit of flush. Eyebrows next. So I have a few different Anastasia Beverly Hills eyebrow powders and I swear by them. This is um, soft brown. You generally want a little darker toward the inside because that's how most eyebrows naturally are unless you're going for a look. And if you really want to go for it, you can airbrush over your eyebrows as well and just draw on whatever. Uh, some people put glue, some people do a whole bunch of stuff there. I generally don't, but I do sometimes airbrush over my eyebrows and then draw. The next thing we're going to do is a little bit of eyeliner. So we're just going to do a little bit of a lip. This is just kind of a clear, soft, non-color. It's a little iridescent, but not a lot, so you're not really going to see it but I find that an unfinished lip with makeup everywhere else just looks a little weird. Now we have a natural look that is complemented by airbrush. We're gonna finish it off with a quick spread. Close your eyes. We're gonna see Lucy's reaction when she sees herself in makeup for the first time. Oh blimey, that's weird. Is it? In as much as I've never seen myself in makeup before, yes. makeup assisted with airbrush. Okay, so the most important thing to remember is to always clean your airbrush machine because you're going to have leftover junk in it. Don't use water, especially not tap water. You have to buy cleanser or sometimes it will come with cleanser. Now, you're ju just going to put, oh my goodness, it's child proof which means it's CJ proof. Put a little bit of that cleanser in there Swirl it around the same way you would with your makeup, kind of get all that in there. Then, if you're not near a sink, just get a nice cloth and do it the same way you'd apply makeup, just blow it out of there. I'm gonna put it on the high level here and just... You can see there's some residue, but uh, this one didn't have a whole lot, so that's great. But um, other colors you may, may use may leave a lot of residue and you don't want it in there for your future makeup, so. That is one of the most important parts. Thanks for watching everyone, I hope that helped a little bit and if you have any questions feel free to pop them in the comments below. Bye!